First, Link awakens. Then he falls asleep again. Then reawakens. How could I not jump at the chance to see an AGDQ double feature of my favorite Zelda game? I mean, the, the logic's right there. I've also got Doc Brown Bear with a $250 donation. Excited to see The Messenger, my favorite game of the last few years on the schedule, and just want to let Vlack SR know that I'll be seeing them soon as I'm learning this run starting next week. Good luck on your run, and remember to do the thing! Donation goes to Tazbot. I am excited for this one as well. I got to host this game a few GDQs ago, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Vlack can do with it. With that, it sounds like Vlack is ready. So here is my friends, the messenger with Vlack SR. Take it away. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Barry SR, I senior the messenger. Joining me on commentary for Vlack's run is Minfin, the legendary bamboo boy, a runner of the messenger. We are very excited howdy, howdy. to see our friend Vlack go very fast and see his practice pay off. Hey guys, uh, I'm Black, I'm Black SR, and I will do a linear no out of bounds category for the messenger. In this retro indie game, it's pretty, pretty amazing this game, guys. So I think um, well, we are ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, so. Any of you guys uh, start the countdown, okay? All right, we are starting in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so opening up into the ninja village, we are a young ninja playing in our treehouse, and we're going to jump out and decide today we might as well attend history class. Um, a little bit about the game as we begin. The Messenger is an action-adventure platformer game developed by Sabotage Studio based in Quebec uh, in 2018, where it won Best Debut Indie Game that year. It was published by Devolver Digital, and it is my favorite game, very close to the heart. Uh, the movement flow is very nice, and one of the core functionalities is the cloud step feature, where you see these lines under the ninja feet. That's a jump refresh every time he strikes something midair. Yeah, it, it's an amazing mechanic that we end up pretty much abusing the rest of the way through because it enables us to do certain tricks, which we'll see coming up soon. And now we got some guests kind of joining in on our class lesson today. As the prophecy is foretold, a demon army has returned as the cycle is complete once again and is attacking the ninja village, trying to wipe out all of humanity. This is sort of our last stronghold. And as prophecy is also foretold, here comes the hero from the West, riding in on an awesome bird of fire with a cool bow. We hope to be somebody that cool someday. Yeah, but I think we gotta learn a little bit more things before we can do what he did. He didn't manage to scare away the, the big angry demon guy, but now we get a thing. We have now the messenger. We get to take over. We don't know what's in the scroll, but <coughs> we're taking it on our back and we have to climb to the highest mountain, the Glacial Peak, to meet uh, some special characters up there. We'll see some more about them later. But under the cover of night, the young ninja leaves his home to carry for the scroll to the east. And uh, this is the first level, Autumn Hills, where we see some actual combat and enemies. This is a very tight platforming level, one of the hardest in the run, as Ninja has no upgrades at this point and has to really rely on fundamentals to get through. Here we actually see a turtle boost. Normally when hitting one of these enemies, they'll push you back so they have some resistance and slow you down. But if you slash in the opposite direction first and then spin the sword into the enemy, that momentum propels you forward and gives you a small boost. It is a, uh, I would say it's kind of like a high, not really highly advanced, but it is definitely take, it takes some time to get used to if you uh, are new to the game, so, but it is definitely a frame saver when you're going for things like world record and things like that. But hey, we're at our first shop, we need 40 shards, we get an ability, we get the slash projectiles in air now, which is going to make cloud stepping and a lot of the movement through mechanics pretty fun starting on this next route. Absolutely. We saw some really cute shops there. That character is our shopkeeper friend. We love them very much, and uh, they're going to provide us some upgrades for these time shards we collect along the way. Very nice platforming, doing some slash jumps to land a bit early there, get up those platforms. 
We're gonna go through a scary uh, turtle gauntlet, get a nice boost there, and then think right thoughts. Uh -huh. Think right, think right, think right. Unfortunately, getting boost to the left, there's uh, kind of some pixel stuff there. Each spike blocks kind of a pair, and unfortunately hit the left spike there, sending him left, but was able to ride the platform and recover. These checkpoints will restore our health to three every time we run over them. No more, no less. And uh, here seeing a nice effect as the audio muffles a bit going underwater. That's where we give a nice shout out to the composer of this game, Rainbow Dragon Eyes, who made one banger of a soundtrack. And I don't know how many times I listen to this on uh, my audio stuff, but it is amazing to listen to all the time. Absolutely. Rainbow Dragon Eyes, also known as Eric Brown, is a phenomenal musician. Just checking them out. Very difficult cycle in this room. Black actually swimming so fast and cutting enough corners to run into the back of that saw. That's impressive in its own right, but now we'll have to take a safer way around the saw. Getting a little extra health in that potion and getting one of those uh, projectile slashes mid-air to get the cloud step to jump all the way over that tower. Yeah, it's, uh, that's probably the easier way to do that. There is a much harder, like, frame perfect way to do that. But... Very nice slash jump up that firefly. That climb. is very nice. Every jump is well measured and has its own setup by feeling a visual or audio cue. Black dropping into the money pit for some free time shards. So the time shards are going to be a resource that's going to be, uh, we need to manage throughout the entire run because there are very specific shops we're going to be doing. At the end of bottom hills, there's actually going to be a shop that we need to pick up a couple of grades for the final one. We need 130 shards uh, by the time we get that shop to make sure we have enough to get the two things we're going to need. Very clean, tight movement through these caves here. Ninja with the climbing claws upgrade that Shoppy gave us for free does make Ninja very sticky, and it's very easy to stick to walls as there's no wall grab button. So merely tapping directional input into a wall will cause you to grab it. A very good what? 142 shards already with three on the way. We're going to make that upgrade. Oh yeah. So the upgrades we're going to end up picking up in this shop. Uh, one is called, uh, it basically gives us short things to throw. The other one is called second move, which allows us that any time that we are hit, we get a damage recovery from that. So we aren't just thrown back without control, which is going to be very handy. In later levels, we shouldn't see it here, hopefully. Um, also seeing some uh, pretty awesome people hopping up in chat. Rainbow Dragon Ice and Sabotage Studios. Alright, and we got the leaf going on a full moon. Heat becomes alive. It is a very easy one cycle thing. We just wow. mash shurikens and slash until that happens. That leaf position was very far away. That was, it seemed like an extra fast kill by Blackcraft. Point yes. Five faster. Very beautiful autumn pills. Well done. All right. Now, this level is one of the hardest in the game. If you're doing any percents. Uh, we are here for probably about five, six seconds. That's about it. And then we say goodbye. <laughs> Nobody passes their first jump program. Hi, Necro. Here we have one of our uh, four lovable friends we'll meet later in the game. Unfortunately, none of the other three in this run. However, their name is Necro. They're Phobkin, which means they're named after the thing that they're supposed to be afraid of. Of course, we find this lovable little guy in the catacombs. Yeah, so the catacombs, uh, which I have lovingly named Cycle Combs, I'm split for it, is all about cycles. Um, there are crushers all over the place that follow very specific cycles, and uh, the cycles start as soon as you enter a group, even if they aren't on screen. Enemies don't start their animations until they're visible, but the mechanics for things like the crushers like this start as soon as you enter. So you have to know those cycles uh, to make running this particular level a breeze. Absolutely. Black actually then found uh, a strat to save some time skipping cycles in the previous underwater room, but opted not to go for it for safety in this run as it is quite hectic and can risk getting crushed to death. Yes, it is a very frame perfect trick, which I have died more times than I would like to care about. Right, very clean cycle here. You can't do this room fast enough to get past those crushers, so it's kind of like a bus. 
right. moving on right on these platforms. The longer you ride on those platforms, the more their uh, momentum going the same direction uh, you get. Skip this pressure cycle, get a health because that health is important because we're going to do a damage boost right through. Oh, normally we do a damage boost through here, so there are actually two ways to do this room and a room coming up in a couple. That one means we're going to take a slightly different route uh, that doesn't involve us having to go around and try to pick up a health upgrade that we're good or a refill. So instead, why right. we go down here to the left instead of up and over on the right? There's only about half a second difference. On, uh, oh. We'll switch some luck for the Badonka Donk. Yep. As he's coming up on a uh, cutscene trigger skip. There we go. <laughs> I got it. Using the legendary pause buffer as he's known for. Way to go. Nailing that precision. A very tight window, maybe two to four frames to jump just over Ninja's feet, where Blow Witch will force you to walk forward and deal with three wizard enemies. That's going to save him about eight seconds. Yeah, so while on the. On the face of it, it doesn't uh, look like yet. When you say a few seconds, I think it's probably about, with the fight and everything, it's about 10, 15 seconds, uh, depending on how fast you pull the wizards. So that is a time save, but it is great. We are with Monster Vader, taking our way up nice. really fast. Just deathly dropping down these platforms as fast as possible, clearing the blocks and enemies in the way, and uh, yeah, we go I about the crusher. I missed the cycle. Okay, with the Donka Donk, that is probably going to break about even. Yeah, so that room right there, there's uh, a couple ways to skip that crusher cycle at the top. Um, but unfortunately, it's like there was a slight stick, but... Okay, now we're going to say hi to our friend Ruxton, the uh, hi, little boss Sam. here. Very tall and posed. Wait a minute. This guy is my <laughs> favorite character. We wish for him to go high, as yeah, it's a slightly faster pattern, about uh, eight seconds. Yeah. We're gonna keep saying that, but uh, if he goes low, it is 50-50 and slower, but this is my favorite way to fight Ruxin, as there's so much more involved, and the execution black showing here with the uh, Zelda blades right off the floor, <coughs> doing a jump slash to get the cloud up, it's just poetry in motion. Yeah, I mean, the, the low version definitely does show more of the mechanics that happen in the fight, because if you get the high rushed in, you see the fireballs raining out, and that's it. Yep, you just get on his level and then smack him until the fight's over. Alright, so now we, we, we have a community speedrun anthem, which Kyle will start on the timing and then I will join in. We are going to have a duet. I hope you enjoy the song of our people. I like Chinese food. Chinese food is good for you. I like to eat Chinese food, and Chinese food is yummy too. If you like me too, you will bring me Chinese food because it is so yummy that they mention I like Chinese food. All right. Yeah. Thank you for no, hearing those are our not song. Things that, Yeah, those are not ones we made up. Those are lyrics actually uh, from Rainbow Dragon Eyes himself for the actual song. <laughs> Very nice movement through the bamboo. Small mistakes in this room, but we have a recovery upon recovery and enough health to spare. Some very nice kind of floaty, nice flowing motions with these uh, lantern jumps. So you can get a double lantern jump and really use that cloud set to reach this new land. It becomes a very yeah, liberating feeling. One other thing that Black was doing on some of those things is that turtle boost mechanic can also work on the switches. So you can actually get small little boosts to do certain things off the switches to get some extra speed. Absolutely. Having a lot of shards going past these wall axers, that's the sort of jam jar looking plants that came out of the ground. Uh, Black has enough shards to make sure he is able to get the wingsuit slash and the swing boost upgrade in Grotto, which is and we the main pressure from shards in the run. Excellent sequence of jumps there, very delicate timing. You need, you know, a jump slash here, a slash in the air for a projectile, and then a one tile jump, which is where you kick off of a single tile block, which is uh, easier said than done. Yeah. Because that is about the only one tile I can do. I don't know how y'all do it. Practice. 
Alright, so speaking of shards, like we said, so coming into the end of Bamboo, before you hit this waterfall, if you have at least 251 shards, which shards you'll get on the rest of it, you're going to be fine for your next shop, mm. which we'll be getting in Howling Grotto. Uh, we'll be picking up uh, two of Grades. One is going to be... Uh, allows us to move faster on the water and dash, which unfortunately doesn't get used very often here. And then there's an ability that comes with the next upgrade. So Kyle, you like talking about the upgrades? Oh, I love the upgrades, thank you. So Shafi is gonna give us a wingsuit from a squirrel clan that was said to fly and soar high up on the clouds. And we don't really care much about that. We, we get to fly, let's go. Um, Ninja's not gonna stay and listen to stories today, but if you would like in the playthrough, Shafi will tell you stories. Uh, so now liberated, we are able to press jump again and hold it to glide, also enabling us with our upgrade to slash vertically, giving us a boost and the cloud step to ascend even faster. Yeah, one fun mechanic is, is uh, if you are in those uh, wind gusts and you hit something and jump at the right time, you actually get a huge vertical boost. Really nice uh, showcasing that mechanic right outside of the shop for conveyance. Like, here's how you use this, here's a cool thing that can happen. Uh, oftentimes, if you ask the messenger, hey, can I do this mechanic? The answer is yes. And then you can play with it and find more secrets under that. It is uh, already proving to be a very deep game. This is probably one of my favorite rooms. We call it the DK room for obvious reasons, but since we're constantly going back and forth. Black gets a huge boost off of that, so he got what we call the DK skip, where we can actually skip that top song. And uh, cut a few seconds off of that. Lots of frames to spare. Nice execution. Oh, yeah. Howling Grotto is a very tight level. It feels tight because it is a cave system. It's one of the things I love about this level. And it was said to have been built by people that uh, worship the wind as the breath of gods. On that drop, we gotta make sure we stay right a little bit so the boulder from the boulder dude throws it to the right side of the left. Because if it goes left, it is time so that it will hit you in the air. Ooh, flies going. Oh! Very nice so, leap. Not quite getting a very, very tight jump into the next room, but keeping that momentum going. Still on a great pace for this level. Yes. That neat can be a death sentence if a wingsuit slash is dropped because then you will fall into the pit. That is unfortunately the only yeet we will see in the 8 bit run, um, but there are much more in the any percent. Yes. Because any percent is the category I love to run. I love doing the yeets in that. 8-bit and linear. Excuse me. Linear is uh, essentially 8-bit plus two stages, which Black will make short work of. Okay, so this boss, Black's gonna have to damage boost through that fist to get to the smash ball, striking it seven times before retreating to the outside to throw a shuriken to start the next cycle. Once it takes that eighth hit, Wind is gonna open up on the sides to get up and that starts a timer. You need to get up there ASAP to deliver as much damage in that window as possible. The goal here to defeat this phase of the boss in two cycles. Black is on a great pace for it by the looks of it. Black taking a little safe because some people damage boost through that left fist when he inside it's just wait a little bit just to get it cool. Now we get into the second phase where that ball is gonna float freely. And it's pretty RNG which way it goes. The best thing is going low left, but all right, so black gets a high right, eight hits, it's done. Very nice low screen position as well. It's possible to end that fight above the screen or below the screen for a difference of about six seconds. Uh, their black is not losing much time at all, maybe 0.5. Very clean boss execution. We're going on to the cool stream marsh. Unfortunately, we have to break this poor fellow's golem every time, and we learned that it was just a disagreement, or a misunderstanding. Uh, they were just mining with the golem, and we thought we were being attacked and accidentally destroyed their golem. They forgave us. Right, so, ready to push your marsh. This is uh, one thing that the messenger does, is every time you get like certain abilities, uh, the level you get it on is a way to learn how to use them, and the next one usually ends up being a little bit we're going to be coming up to a room that's going to showcase uh, 
something with it, and then after that it's going to be pretty much the same stuff, just pretty tight. So this is called the Great Room. It is the longest and This is an excellent room. time to read donations yeah. as well. Good time for donations, you said? Oh, Absolutely. Yes. All right, let's take a $1,000 donation from Minos27. Shoutouts to Black, Meefin, and the Mistress of Berries himself for showcasing one of my favorite speed games. GDQ is the event that introduced me to speedrunning, and Streiser's Messenger Run a few years ago is what pulled me into learning the game myself. I know cancer has affected many of us in so many ways, and I am no different. Late 2019, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer, and early acceptance and detection was a major reason that I beat it. Not everyone has the same options, and luck that I did, and the work that PFC does hits me to my very core. Thank you to everyone involved for what you do, and Godspeed, Messenger! Minus. That was amazing. Thank yeah. you very much. Midas, Thank a you, legendary Midas. member of our community. Thank you, Fred. We love you. So we can probably get in one or two more donations, because there's not a whole lot other than uh, just careful movement through this. Sounds good. I've got a $500 donation here from Space Narc. Godspeed, messenger. I've also got Dreamscaper coming in with $10. Hype for both the messenger and Tazbot. Let's hit that 2.5 million. And an update on that, we are now over $85,000 towards Tazbot, so keep it going. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your generosity. Yes. Very nice. Black just coming off the back of that with the one damage bully room. A very difficult, almost like frame perfect trick to get through the end of that without taking a second hit. So there's actually going to be a cycle skip we're probably going to be seeing here. Which is going to be tight. We've only got a few rooms left for the boss. So we'll probably get one more donation in before the boss and then we'll be good to go. All right. Let's take... $50 from Corvallis Wolf. Donating for the Messenger Run. Love this retro-inspired game and super excited for the run. Thank you. I, I know you love this boss, so I'll let you take this one. This boss is a beautiful cheese. We're going to use Jump Slashes up to catch her jumping to the ring, then knock her down for a quick stun cycle, delivering damage before going to the middle. We try to gain height and strike her down all the way from the top set of rings, which should only go to below half of her HP. Getting lots of damage, Black is able to get the uh, whipless quick kill and get to the center of the map off of the left cycle, which normally loses about two and a half seconds. Very clean execution. And we are moving on into the Searing Crags, or the Agro Crags for Nickelodeon fans. We are uh, going to be hoping to kill this first meatball as a sign of good luck. Uh, it's not there, but we will redeem it later in this level, as we are about to get the rope dart from our friend Shopkeeper, and then go very fast by our slogan, Rope Dart Everything. So what this uh, particular item does may look familiar. It is not a hook shot. It is not a grappling hook. It is very specifically a rope dart. But we go fast. Striking enemies, lanterns, balls, rings, whatever you can, except spikes. The rope dart has many versatile applications, both intended and otherwise, and enables us to do awesome things in the speed run. By striking the wall with it as you climb, you're even able to use it for a rope dart climb, minimizing the time ninja spins away from the wall while ascending. Nice falling stalactite to get a ceiling skip there. If you see a ceiling you can jump through, you can usually just go to the next room. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is where the, the run really picks up and gets fast, especially on the even linear part. Trying to find every ceiling. opportunity to move faster. Uh, even hitting corners with the rope dart to get a quick fall, which is what we call a Hansan. This tech is applied everywhere as possible and sensible to use. So, I don't know if, uh, there's one thing the rope lets us do, so we'll see if Black can let us do it, and then we'll kind of explain what's going on with it. There it is! Yeah! 
There's the teleport using the Pursuivant Picant uh, Armadillo enemies that are in the ground. Um, Black is killing the enemy he's rope darting to at the same time that the same creature type appears at the edge of the screen, which causes Ninja to end up teleporting at the new instance of that creature. We got the twins. Tell us a little Seuss. bit about these guys. Yeah, so uh, we got this is Colossus, Colossus and Seuss's brothers, Colossus Red, Seuss's Green. Um, it's a pretty RNG heavy fight, so it's just knowing what's coming up whenever they do things. Uh, Colossus has more health, I believe, whereas the Seuss's, I forget. Seuss's is the tanky boy. Seuss's is the tanky So we got Arm Day, Leg Day. Arm Day, we can only attack from the back. Leg Day, we can only attack from the front. Unfortunately, uh, Black's getting pretty unlucky with the RNG on this fight, so they have two quick attacks, a boulder attack and a personal attack, and then they have a team attack, which he saw both of them on there. We call Seuss's Spin Ball and People's Elbow, but it didn't bother Black. He still got that really, really fast. <laughs> Very nice execution, surviving the People's Elbow with the Rope Dart iframes that it gives us, continually striking the boss to get closer. Rope Dart gives us, of course, both defense and offensive capabilities. Uh, get your shovel, please. Sour, please. Any dancing modes you love in the chat. Glacial Peak has a banger, and it is a very fast level. It is. Lincoln, this you will miss put together all of the things that we've learned over the run so far. Oh, very stylish left side oh. on. I actually haven't seen that one before. Uh, it is a, a mostly vertical level. Um, one thing I've uh, made a comparison to is it's like the uh, messenger version of Celeste, because you're going up the mountain as fast as possible. Absolutely. Like, hope you don't slip and fall. There are actually ice physics, but you probably won't see them in the speedruns. You're constantly moving forward. Yeah, there's not very often that we're actually walking on the ground in this level. Normally, ice levels tend to be a bit unpleasant for me personally, but this one has always just been pure joy and adrenaline. The nice haunts on there, getting up and killing his boulder enemy. Uh, we are going to see this strange wanderer with the spear again. Don't really know what his deal. Maybe we'll see him later. Okay. Up and over, real easy. Very nice glacial so far. The interesting extra cloud step grab off of that lantern into a really smooth one tile, and he is going for the next teleport. And he gets it. That is both of the oh, yeah. teleports in the 8-bit uh, segment of the run. There's a few more in the linear portion. And there is a whole bunch of mini persons. So if you guys want to see glitchy stuff like that happen... Closing out right. the last climb of the level in style. This is another excellent time for donations. Fantastic. I've got a $300 donation here from Hilkinson. After about 15 hours, I finished my first The Messenger 100% casual playthrough on my Switch yesterday with the entertaining DLC. Can't wait to see how the first part of the game is being demolished now. Next up is learning the run for myself. And shout outs to Sabotage Studio for this stellar game and Rainbow Dragon Eyes for the amazing soundtrack. I get one more in before the next little starts. I've got $25 here from Nemacrad. Love the messenger and love getting it crossed for AGDQ. Good luck on the run, Black SR. Thank you. All right, Kyle. This is, I know, is your favorite level, so I'll let you take over on this one. <laughs> Well, it is a very close second to Catacombs, but it is my strongest level. I love the ambiance in this level. It's very intense lore-wise. Horrible's not going to get sent if Ninja is going to die here. It's a true test of the messenger's worthiness to deliver the message. Uh, hopefully, this is the Tower of Time Save, where we will be seeing extra time save. Um, having to reset the room for the Hail Mary. <laughs> Which, the wizard is in the oh. worst position possible and decides to block Black. It's very unfortunate, but we do get to see our friend, Quarble, the uh, Taxman and MVP of this game, with his magic ring reversing time and granting us nigh immortality. Yeah. No, we didn't get to see too much of him because Black did a uh, 
uh, he quit out to menu because the cutscene with him is longer than it takes to uh, do the dead death I can talk. Quit to menu and re reload. You hate to see Corporal, but it is an excellent tactical reset to give that extra health back and try it again. Fortunately, Hail Mary Room being very difficult today. But here's to the rest of the tower. Uh, getting an excellent minus start, actually, named after a legend in our community on that wizard to get uh, a quick damage boost before it teleports away. This is more of the RNG the wizards are supposed to give us. A very good levy special there. Jumping up and skipping a laser cycle. And uh, going for a Kuningus one cycle here. Uh, just barely missing the extra jump and hitting some spikes, but those only taking us down to uh, 2 HP. Normally spikes would do 3, but those are on moving pressures, so it's a little different. Uh, the eyeballs do not want to drop the 15% health upgrades or health drops that we would need to make a damage boost for a laser skip in this room. So we will unfortunately have to wait for these crushers, but still a very nice room where you really get to put the wingsuit mechanic to use and test your patience. Progressing into another room with rope dart rings. Gonna have to be very careful to yeet across these platforms while uh, they're blocking the lasers. And passing the test of the first wind room. And, uh, nice uh, and then... call levy kicks. Entering a room and then uh, just kicking off a wall and passing. So Black's actually going to be coming up to a room where he developed a strat for getting to the next room faster. So let's see if we get that one coming up. Very dangerous room to do it. Oh. Quick there reset, we go. go on for the Ojo de Black. An excellent strat that allows us to boldly go where most messengers dare to tread. Especially considering that you're left with one HP usually going into that next room and it's pretty dangerous. A bit of a nightmare that you're able to just narrowly avoid today. Now, the setup for it is good, but stressful. This next trick is a really interesting glitch because we're about to be like, you, we hit a crystal through the wall. So if you hold away from a wall when there's a crystal like that and you press jump and slash at almost the same time, uh, you can actually just carry the uh, hitbox from your sword through the wall and hit crystal. It's used a few times in the run. Very nice platform jumps using the slash to land a little bit earlier for each of those jumps at the end. Clean entry to meeting our blue robe friends from earlier. They're part of, you know, the same order with the first shopkeeper right there. Uh, friend or foe? Well, they turn out to be friend, but they have to test us. So here we're going to see a beautiful boss design, sort of an arcane sigma. The timekeeper, the arcane goal. Going to try to kick off of his hand as it begins to descend and then use the rope dart for the rest of the fight to remain connected to the head, exploiting those iframes to get past the arcane sparks and continue to deal damage to the center. I mean, it's like, the speedrun version of this fight is just so fast and you don't really see the mechanics of it, but when you play it casually, there is so much more than you just don't see. Excellent 8 bit. GG Black. Yeah. Our, uh, there are going to be things that happen. Um, we're basically going to be rushing into the future. Uh, there is going to be a cutscene here, so we can probably get uh, one or two donations in here because it's nothing going on. Sounds good. I've got $25 here from Jacob K. Found an out-of-bounds glitch when playing this game casually and was super excited. Good to see a tough no out-of-bounds run. I've also got Shinobius Worm with $25. Had to donate in anticipation of the messenger, considering my alias. Great game. Best of luck to the runner. My ninja message to everyone is, let's get Tazbot on the schedule, y'all. And an update on that, we are now over $86,000, almost 87000 out of the 200. Let's keep it coming. Yeah. So since we travel in the future, we also need new abilities. Uh, we got a whole eight more bits, so we're at 16 bits, and we got a hat, so we get to go fast with hat. 
and you may recognize that sweet sound design of I believe the YM2612. We have that Genesis bass slapping us with excellent Cloud Tunes music, one of the best tracks in the game. And we're seeing a Strat Black himself came up with very bold over the top instead of taking the under route. Uh, using two one tiles and a high tile to uh, skip over all of those spikes, you love to see it. Lots of health for a potential spike boost coming up. Wish of luck to get past these spikes with excellent second wins. Unfortunately, there's a Hansan there. We will play it a little bit safer going up. But as this avoids death, this is the best. Yeah. I was say, High Rose is probably one of my favorite stages. It is also the longest one that I think in linear, and uh, this is one of the reasons why. We get this angry red dragon chasing us. This is Manfred. He is not going to move, but uh, hopefully we can help him out with that a little later. So there are three auto scroller sections in Cloud Ruins. Uh, it is possible, like Black oh. is almost doing here, to be there able to get off the screen, and he's gone. Where'd he go? <laughs> We're about to see something happen here in just a second. So, if you hit the end of, cut, of the end of the chase trigger, um, ooh, and he got the pressure skill. Yeah, Skipping over the, the checkpoint trigger. to make that safer too. All right, in this next uh, low room with no floor, we will see the first teleport in Lenny. There it is. Uh, very risky strats. This is sort of a cursed room, having to drop low and manipulate these ghost movement pattern. Ghosts are interesting enemies. They'll first move on the Y axis to get on Ninja's level and then uh, advance toward Ninja. Here, using that property by full jumping to get ghosts in just the right position to teleport onto the second ghost in the screen. Good old Manhattan Banshee. You see a very uh, nice uh, visual bug, uh, wingsuit flashing while sort of T-pose gliding down. Yeah, out of the three sections, uh, personally, I think the second one is also probably like the hardest one. I agree. Definitely the second for me. Because that's the one I generally try not to go off screen for. The rest of them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's go. There we go. Easy. First damage boost, just just getting yeah. fairly scraping by on that last spike crusher. <laughs> Black sees the spikes and thinks it's free real estate. Yeah, hopping on that crusher going up so we can get this for a slight boost to get ahead in that. Nice trippy ghost. Shout outs to the amazing uh, messenger community with all the crazy names and fun times. And for the excellent efforts in Hall of Fast, where they uh, stitch together room by room times for the 8-bit and linear. <laughs> Third chase, uh, missing lantern, but we're not going to fall today. And we have, uh, we have killed the animals in this round. Yeah, I, I didn't even see him do it. I was like, wait, where, 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 where's it go? <laughs> and there we go. All right. Now actually facing the Sky Serpent that's been chasing us, uh, we're going to attempt to execute a glitch called Balfred uh, by causing him to remain round up chasing his own tail. So if we pull it off, we'll... Uh... We'll try it again. Very close. Sorry. It's I'm worth sorry. it for the retry. No, it's okay. Absolutely. This is an so, absolute treat, and the consistency in black is <clears throat> probably the strongest I've ever seen. I have full confidence that this is the ball crit. I like all the angry red dragons hopping up in chat. Those are awesome. Okay, we got it. All right. Let's go. So, there it is. So the reason this works is because we have head. <laughs> oh. The clouds, they're cursed. Ah, uh, my What? Well, it is GDQ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think GDQ. Uh, 
almost had it. But yeah, so the reason that lift does end up working when it does consistent is his head tracks the ninja. So if you get it to where when he tries to go out of that uh when he's doing his sure dance in the air. That yeah, that's just he just stays in like, his place. Mm. There we are. That is Manfred. Manfred is probably the hardest boss in the game and the biggest roadblock in the speed run. Big props for getting the retry and getting that, nailing it on the second time. Oh, wait, here's that stranger again. <gasps> it's you. Parmatazo, he says, uh, you've fallen into our trap, you're going into the underworld. And here we hear some amazing music. The percussion in this track is some of my favorite. Oh, there we go. Black getting the teleport here for style. I didn't even know that one existed. I just learned something. It is not faster, but it is very stylish. Doing it for the marathon swag. Excellent movement through this underworld portion. Just slinging ropes at all these walls, zooming through, jumping over the lava. Take a platform ride, and as soon as those spikes are gone, we're getting out of there. You just love to see that you're just constantly bouncing upwards. Uh, rope darting through the Mike Wazowskis. Got places to be. The Underworld is probably my favorite level, and it's it's short, sweet, but the music is awesome, and the tech you to it is great. It really is. As far as, like, run-ending levels go, it is... It's almost relaxing because the flow is just too fast and spicy to worry about it. Making the safety save to make sure that if anything happens in this room, you don't die. It's very possible when trying to cut those corners faster to rope dart a lantern and drive your feet through the spikes. That that kills the ninja. Yep. Now, Kyle, uh, I don't know if you knew, but did you know that there's lava rising in this room that you can't touch? There is. Uh, we like to call the the kind of boiling orange liquid orange Fanta, or just Fanta. And it, you are not to drink the Fanta. It is very hot. We just move too fast for that room. We don't even know it's there. Excellent. Coming up on the end of Underworld. One more attempt to grab these stalactites. Nailing very precise rope dart while falling. And we are right. up against Barmatazel, the demon general. For this fight, we're going to rope dart through him and attempt to deliver lots of damage while waiting for his first teleport. He's going to throw his glaives up, and Black's just going to follow him into the left corner. I've never seen this before. Just <laughs> delivering all the damage as possible, turning health into DPS. Time is coming up. Waiting for the first idol and... Time, 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 time. GG. GG. Great, run. I'm not sure about that, but... But, um, yeah, it's, I think it's a good run for a marathon, I guess. At least we can, we can, we could get a, a half of one fresh. Yeah, it was to me. Yeah. Ah, it's it okay, was, guys. It was yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my jaw was thoroughly on the floor through most of it. Ah, it's Let's okay. Go. That's not bad with the death two title screens. Oh. Okay, there. This was a pretty good run, I guess. Um, and I saw. Um, before I finish, uh, finish with this, uh, guys, uh, I want to send a few channels. The first one is for the. the. Tabot that just be running community, or the Messenger community. There is a uh, great people there. Um, Many talented speedrunners there, including Kyle Derry and Manfin here in the commentary. A really nice runner, guys. So, give a follow to them. Uh, 
and and also thank you very much uh, Kyle Berry and um, Mindfilm for doing this great commentary, amazing commentary guys. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And if yeah, anybody is interested in learning this uh this speedrun, if you go to speedrun.com slash the messenger, there's links to the speedrun discord there. We huh? are happy to have people come in and learn this game. It's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Do you have uh, something to say, uh, Kyle Berry? Um, eternal thanks to Sabotage Studios for making my favorite game, for the community for supporting us. Uh, Sabotage also has a very active community on their official Discord, and if you're interested in the lore of the Messenger and its ARG, I highly recommend you join that community and check things out. Uh, I just mm -hmm. want to thank everybody at GDQ for having this awesome game and letting us commentate for it. Uh, it's been an honor. Can I read you one more donation before you all leave? Please do. We had a thousand dollars come in from Sabotage. Amazing oh. to see there is still love for the messenger after more than two years. Cheers, commentators, and Godspeed, Vlack SR. Our entire team is rooting for you. Love Sabatim. Oh my god. <laughs> thank you very That's much. Awesome. Uh, that sounds awesome, guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I think uh, that's all guys. Uh, Thank you very much for watching my runs in this marathon. Thank you again for the commentary, Calberry and Mindfin. And see you next time. Bye bye. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. All right. Thank you, Vlack, for that amazing run. That was. Uh, yeah, all of the runs today are just. I, I can't. I, I don't even know how. Um, I'm going to cope with some more donations. Let's take a $10 donation from Nufacus. Shoutouts to Quarble, who saved the run by resurrecting our favorite messenger. Props to Vlack, who has been moving too fast for my eyes to follow. Kyle and Mifin, Minfin with the banger commentary as well. We also had a $50 donation from Nomad, the messenger. Next day delivery. And one more donation I want to get in here. I've got a, here we go, a $25 donation from Wolf Prince. Shout out to Mr. Game and Shout for speedrunning those donations as hard as the runners are speedrunning the games. I'm so glad to spend this week with GDQ and let's end cancer. And you know what? I think I'm going to call it a day there. This has been my final hosting shift of Awesome Games Done Quick 2021. Thank you so much, GDQ, for letting me be here. Thank you, everyone out there watching and donating for making this awesome event possible and making this one of the things that I have the great honor to participate in uh, every time that, that I get the chance to be here on this hosting desk with you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to be taking a quick break, but when we get back, you are going to be in the capable hands of my good friend, Marforia. They will be taking over the hosting duties as we get into the upcoming Beat Saber run. Until next time, y'all, I will see you in the future. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 Online, powered by Twitch. My name is Marforia and I will be your host for the upcoming runs. I am so very hyped for what's to come, namely Beat Saber, because rhythm games are amazing. I really hope you all at home are hyped too, because you do not want to miss this. Also, a reminder that our donation incentive is still open for bonus any percent warps during the Link's Awakening Tazbot run, and we're almost halfway there. We're currently at 80, around 89,000 out of 200,000, so if you'd like to see that, uh, be sure to get those donations in. And actually, speaking of donations, we still have plenty coming in. We have a $10 donation from Era saying, my girlfriend and I love to play Beat Saber. And Tazbot after watching Beat Saber makes a perfect evening for us. Greetings from Germany and go Fruit Cup, go Tazbot. We have an anonymous $100 donation saying, let's go. Yes, let's go. We also still have some donations left over from that amazing messenger run from earlier. We got a $25 donation from Kerr Davy saying, got to donate during this messenger run, one of my favorite indie games with a rocking soundtrack. Here's to Tazbot running Link's Awakening and let's get to Ocarina All Dungeons. We have to hit that $2.5 million mark for that. So keep those donations rolling. We have a $100 donation from Bellator saying, The Messenger has been a great game for me and my friend Nate Dog. I'm happy to watch it get crushed. We have $5 from Era saying, $5 for Paul going towards Tazbot. Thank you everyone working behind the scenes at AGDQ. Your efforts are so very appreciated. 